Our next workshop and our last workshop is about money management skills and building wealth that transcends generations. Yes, very interesting. Do you have questions on how to talk to your kids about wealth? Well, this next session is just right for you. So take your notepads, take your pen and keep them really close. Enjoy. Olubumi Abodere Talabi is an author, the publisher of Clever Clogs Books and the convener of Akada Children's Book Festival. She is passionate about creating visually engaging, culturally relevant content for children and has a desire to see steadily increasing literacy rates in her community. Her passion for writing developed into collaborating with talented artists to create beautifully illustrated children's picture books designed to make reading attractive and excite children, parents and teachers. Please welcome Olubumi Aboderi Talabi as she takes us on this parents' workshop titled Raising Money Wise Children. Hello everyone, my name is Olubumi Aboderi Talabi and welcome to this workshop for parents. Our topic is Raising Money Wise Children. In other words, training your children to know how to generate, keep and grow wealth so that you and yours can build wealth that transcends generations. To make it easy to remember what I'm going to say, I've summarized everything under five headings. Number one, perspective. Number two, priorities. Number three, planning. Number four, patience number five people all right perspectives priorities planning patience and people so let's start with number one perspectives frugality is the opposite of wastefulness teach your children to be frugal let them know that they're supposed to live within their income. Less is not always inferior to more. Teach them the value of saving small sums over a series of seasons. Show your children why assets are preferable to just mere materials. Teach them to budget because that is how you maintain your lifestyle in the long run. Set parameters for your children so that they understand that quality is often preferable to quantity. Teach them early to avoid the status symbol weight. You're not what you drive. A swatch tells the time just the same as a Piaget. If your children are faced with a choice between style and savings, give them the perspective to understand why they should more often than not choose savings over style. Help them to know that wealth is not what you spend, but what you reserve. Don't give them everything automatically. Let them figure out some things by themselves. Don't just jump in to solve all their problems. Let your children be aware of how fortunate they are by making them, for example, walk to school for a change or take the BRT or go to a real market instead of a supermarket. If they're teenagers, consider letting them work over the holidays. They can do internships, for example. Or better still, teach them the principles of entrepreneurship. 
Show them how to make their own money and why this is crucial. Give them the perspective of starting their own SME, for example. Introduce the notion of being a job creator rather than a job seeker. So my number one P is perspectives. Number two, priorities. Teach your children to prioritize efficiency and productivity in how they use their time, their energy, and their money. Help them understand what it means to be financially independent. Being able to live for years without receiving a salary is not a dream, it's an imperative. Attaining sustainable financial independence in your old age is the priority. Train them to make it a priority to persistently save and invest. Teach them to make timeliness a priority. Showing up on time makes a difference in, in one's mentality, in one's preparation, in one's training and in one's results. Show them how to play a good offense as well as a good defense. Now, in this context, an offense means, in this context, an offense refers to the ability to earn or generate income. Show your children how to make money. A lot of us show them how to spend money, but let's also show them how to make money. Defense, in this context, refers to the ability to save and grow that income. Show them how to grow the money show them how to keep the money. So number two P is priorities. Number three, planning. Planning what to do with money. Controlling how money is spent. These are key factors to accumulating wealth. Budget planning, tax planning, succession planning, insurance planning, all of them, all of them need to be given consideration. How you structure your companies? Do you have a living trust? What happens in the case of eventuality? I know we don't want to think about it, but what happens in the, to your family when life happens? Where is the will? Do they know where the will is kept? Teach your children how to get probate. You have to strike a very delicate balance because on the one hand your children need to know enough not to be cheated but on the other hand they should not know how wealthy you are especially if they haven't generated their own source of recurring income yet if their heads become full of the notions that my parents are wealthy it can actually have a retarding effect on their potential no matter how wealthy you are Teach your children discipline and frugality. Let that be the focus rather than what they will inherit. Put plans in place so that your children discover your true financial worth after they have developed their own consistent revenue stream. After they have demonstrated professionalism, maturity, frugality and discipline. And don't promise anyone anything in your will, not even in jest. So my number three P is planning. Number four, let's talk about patience, delayed gratification. You need to set an example of patience. You need to train your children to be patient, train them to delay gratification. Don't always hop to answer their requests because that is how you create a self-entitled, antisocial little monster. Unfortunately, a negative side effect to the advancement in technology is this 24-hour connectedness. It's not healthy psychologically or socially. It's amped up this lifestyle of now, 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 impatience, reject that. Impatient people tend to make more mistakes. 
Those that have an upper hand in any negotiation are those who are not desperate, are those who are not impatient. So the fourth P is patience. Number five P, that's people. And perhaps that should have come first because true wealth is people, if I may be permitted to say that. Teach your children to invest in people. Let your children see you turn somebody else's life around for good. Teach them how to network, how to build an ecosystem of associates from all sectors. Teach them the importance of access, relationships, and why they should not burn bridges. Above all, teach them discernment. Why? Because who they marry will have the single biggest impact on their adult lives. It will determine whether they live an organized life or a stressful life. In the book, The Millionaire Next Door, authors Thomas Stanley and William Danko state categorically, and they have empirical research to back this up, that most people will never become wealthy in one generation if they are married to people who are wasteful. Teach your children to choose their spouse wisely. Someone that they can live in peace with for the rest of their lives. Teach them not to ignore red flags in courtship. From the time that they are young, show them examples of good spouses. Casually drop hints in conversation about the right kind of person to marry so that it doesn't become, you know, uh, overly nagging or overly obvious uh, what you're driving at. Um, this is so that you don't get to a stage where they are on the cusp of marrying a vagabond and you have to say, I forbid you to marry that person. Usually by that time, it's too late because hormones would have kicked in and hormones override parents many, many times. So except by the grace of God, to, to try and get them to see the light, to see the true character or motive of that person. At that stage, it may be too late. So start while they are young, talking to them about the qualities and the importance of a good spouse. One of the findings in the book is that those who have enough money to live independently throughout their old age are overwhelmingly those who stayed married to the same person and lived in the same house for the majority of their married lives. So train your children to discern good character, to be judges of good character. Let them understand that there are gold diggers out there who do want to use people for their wealth or for their connections. Not everyone that smiles at them is their friend. So the five Ps again are perspectives, priorities, planning, patience and people. This is after all the Akara Children's Book Festival so I'm going to give you parents some book recommendations all right. I'm going to recommend of course The Millionaire Next Door by Thomas Stanley and William Danko that's the book I referred to in my talk. I'm also going to recommend a book called Mistakes Millionaires Make by Henry Clark. Now in this book Henry Clark interviewed I think about I don't know, over a dozen or a dozen or so people who were millionaires, but lost every single penny. He chronicles how they made their money. He chronicles how they lost their money. And then he chronicles what happens next. It's a very fascinating, very, very eye-opening read because he's actually one of them, one of the people um, in the book. It happened to him and he was stunned that it happened to him. He had a large company, lots of employees. You know, his family was doing well, but then one thing went wrong, a second thing went wrong, and their life completely changed. So mistakes millionaires make. It's good for you to read it, and um, you can also discuss it, the lessons you learn from that book with your children. Then I'm also going to recommend Good to Great and Built to Last. Both of them are written by Jim Collins. And how will you measure your life by um, the late Clay Christensen? How will you measure your life by Clay Christensen? And finally, 
I'm going to recommend Persuasion by Jane Austen. And you may think that that's a strange recommendation for uh, the topic Raising Money Wise Kids. But the reason why I like uh, Persuasion in particular is because it talks about this issue of being a good judge of character, of marrying the right person, or the consequences of marrying the wrong person. They're children's versions of persuasion. So if you can get a hold of those, you can encourage your children to read that, or you can read it to them if you have family uh, book reading time, and you can discuss what you think of each chapter. So I'm going to leave you with seven things I learned from the Danko Stanley book, Millionaire Next Door. All right. So if you're taking notes, you may want to write this down. All right. So this is a direct quote from their book. They say seven common denominators among people who become wealthy are number one, they live below their means. Number two, they allocate their time and their money efficiently in ways that are conducive to building wealth. Number three, they believe that financial independence is more important than displaying a high social status. Number four, their parents did not provide economic outpatient care. That means that their parents were not giving them handouts. They had to work to build the wealth that they have. And so it's important for you to teach your children as well how to work to build their own wealth, not just rely on yours. Number five, their adult children are economically self-sufficient. Remember, he's talking about people who become wealthy they're talking about people who become wealthy and stay wealthy. One of the things that helps them to remain wealthy is that their children are not leeching off them. Their children are economically self-sufficient. Number six, they are proficient at targeting marketing opportunities or market opportunities. And number seven, they choose the right occupation. Now hear me, in that book, what astounded me the most is the majority of the people who they classified as millionaires. And by millionaires, they were looking at people who had over a million, because they're American, they were talking about dollars. They had people who had over a million dollars by the time they, they, in cash, by the time they reached retirement. The professions were things like teachers, firefighters, nurses, and some of the professions, it would surprise you. And what they said was, it's not because they earned the largest amounts of money, but it was because they knew how to keep what they earned, they were frugal and they lived within their means. They found that some of the people who earned the highest salaries, they were spending more than they earned. So it doesn't matter if your salary is $750,000 uh, a year. If you're spending $755,000 every year, you are poor. You're going to be poor, right? In comparison to someone who's maybe just earning, you know, 200,000 Naira a month, but that person has figured out how to live on 80,000 Naira a month. That person is wealthier than you. Even though you may have all the bling and the flash, the person that knows how to save, how to budget, how to grow their wealth, that person, when it matters the most, which is when everyone is in their old age, that person will be wealthier than you. So I'm going to wrap up right there. Thank you for joining me at this workshop where I've talked about raising money wise kids, AKA building wealth that transcends a generation. We've talked about the five P's. I've shared some book recommendations. This video should be available uh, for you to watch again and again on the akadafestival.org website. Enjoy the rest of the festival. The Thank you so much, Mrs. Talabi, for sharing the five Ps. Friends, how many do you remember? People, patience, perspectives, priority, and planning. Well done. Clap for yourself and clap for me too. Hi everyone, I'm Olubumi Abodari Talabi and I'm a children's picture book author. And today I'm going to tell you about my book, Cobb the Antelope. Now, Cobb the Antelope, released in 2017, is a book that's set in the Gashaka Gumti National Park, which is located somewhere in the northeast of Nigeria. And it's all about a curious baby antelope whose mother warns him not to stray. But guess what? 
he strays and he gets lost and it's all about his adventure and how he he gets tricked by a hyena a very cunning hyena but he eventually finds his way back home the book the concept may seem a little bit dark you know because it's all about kidnapping it's about a predator it's about escaping from a predator but it helps to it helps parents explain the subject to their children about stranger danger the kinds of things a predator might, might say to to groom a potential victim and the way they'll try to cut them off from the rest of their family and you know offer them things and give them things that they think they want but fortunately for Cobb the hyena doesn't want to eat him straight away the hyena wants to keep him until he's bigger but then as Cobb gets bigger he gets these beautiful antlers that grow and he uses the antlers to escape so I won't tell you everything about the book you have to go get it from cleverclogsbooks.com it's also available on the akadafestival.org e-bookstore Last year, due to the pandemic, we couldn't have this festival physically. So we had it online. This year, we're having the festival online again, reaching out to all our book lovers across the globe and providing a platform for seasoned new or self-published African authors and illustrators of children's books to showcase their amazing work to the world. It's encouraging to have this festival happen despite all the challenges we've been facing. I would like to say a big thank you to all our participants, the supporters, partners, speakers, volunteers, and staff that has made this a reality. Post screenshots and pictures of your Akada Children's Book Festival so far. We would really love to see that as we love and we work with feedback. We understand the need to keep listening and sharpening your learning, which is why this workshop will be available for another three months exclusively for those who registered though. When your session is over, please visit the virtual edition stand, browse through the ebooks, and buy lots of books. Also, check out our art gallery and please give us your feedback. We could not have this year's festival without the support of our sponsors, our amazing sponsors, supporters, and partners. We would like to say a big thank you to the British Council, Stambik IBTC, Tanko, Cloud Studio, Zolin's Kitchen, Safari Fitness, Supreme Education Foundation School, Wazobia FM, Footsteps School, Dugo, Eden Life, and Point Newspaper. Publishers, editors, artists, and writers. Have you heard about Akin? Akin is the Association of Children's Authors and Illustrators of Nigeria. It's a community for professionals who create content for children. You can find out more about Akin by sending an email to hello at akin.ng or follow the association's handles at official Akin on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Remember to download the Clever Clocks app from Google Play Store. This app is perfect for children aged 2 to 6. It teaches them how to tell the time, colors, and shapes. Woo. From time to time, free books are also added too. And after the festival is over, check out the Clever Clocks app and give us your feedback, please, so we can make it better.
Hello, my name is Oni Oluwashei and I'm a fine artist. I had my first degree from Ahmadu Bello University, Zaria, and a master's degree from the Institute of African Studies, University of Ibado. And um, I want to briefly talk about the kind of work I do. So a summary of the kind of work I do centers on family, beauty, and uh, society. So my process also involves uh, research into areas that are of concern to me. Um, about the Akada Festival 2020 uh, online gallery, from the previous uh, exhibition uh, that took place online, you could visit the Akada website and then visit the online art gallery and from there you could see art from professional artists, from children who also participated in the exhibition and you could reach out to them. If you see anything you like, you can also make a purchase by reaching out to the artist. Uh, we also had uh, the illustration competition that happened uh, last year as well and we had five finalists and Ken Madozier came top uh, from the selection of five from four judges and her work uh, centered uh, around for me it was about working with people and supporting them in sharing your goals and your dreams and using your God-given talent to light up the world. And the theme for last year was light up the world, share your story. And her work actually captured everything we were looking at for a winner. So this year, I'm encouraging you and inviting you to participate. If you are an artist, whether a professional artist, uh, a beginner or a child or your parent and you see that your child has a talent you could participate in this exhibition for free